Welcome back to this Global Health YouTube channel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about statistical tests, which test to do when. It's not complicated, and the key is to understand what question it is that you're asking. And when you understand the question, it becomes very easy to understand and interpret the results and to decide which test to do when. So don't go away, stick with me, you're gonna love this. We're gonna cover three things in this video. The T-test, ANOVA, which is analysis of variance, and the chi-squared test. For the T-test, there'll be the single sample. There's gonna be two-tailed, one-tailed, and paired, right? We're gonna do all four of those things. And for the chi-squared, there's the goodness of fit. And of course, there's also the test of independence, right? You're gonna find all of this super duper easy to understand, so stick with me, don't go away, let's do this. Let's talk about the t-test, right? And I've got real data and real examples here, and we're gonna look at four different scenarios, four different applications of the t-test looking at this data. When we do a t-test, we're asking a question about the difference in means or averages, difference between two populations or difference between one population at different points in time, or the difference in an average mean that we're seeing compared to some sort of hypothesized or, or presumed average, right, or presumed mean. And we're asking the question, is our sample, can from our sample data, can we make inference about the wider population? Is this somehow representative of the truth that's out there, representative of the population from which the, the sample was taken? In other words, is this statistically significant? And this is how hypothesis testing works. We assume the opposite, the counterfactual, the antithesis. We assume that there's no difference in means between these two populations. If that were true, and we call that the null hypothesis, if that were true, then how likely would it be that we would get a sample from the population that shows a difference that we're seeing or, or greater? What is the probability of that? If we find that that is very improbable, and we decide upfront, by the way, we decide upfront what we consider, what the threshold for what we would consider to be very improbable, what do we mean by very, and we, we often use 5%, if it's 5% or less in terms of likelihood or probability, if, we cons if it, it would be very improbable to get a sample like we've gotten, if the null hypothesis were true, and it would be very improbable to get the sample, but we have gotten the sample, we can then make the inference that the null hypothesis must in fact be incorrect, that this assumption that there's no difference, that that's incorrect. We can reject that and we can accept the fact that there is in fact a difference and that our sample data is statistically significant. And that's how hypothesis testing works. So the first example here at the top on the left is a single sample t-test. In other words, we've just got one sample. Just In this case, we've just got life expectancy in Africa. So we've just taken Africa. We've got life expectancy. Uh, we don't have two populations. We've got one population. It's just Africa. And we've got a presumed life expectancy or presumed mean. It could be for any old reason. It could be any reason why we believe that the life expectancy should be 50 or should be 55. It could be any number. And we would ask the question, is the, the sample that we've got 48.9 years, is that statistically significantly different from that presumed mean or that presumed population mean? And then you get you basically get a p-value if that p-value is less than 0.05 or 5%. If, that, if that's the number that you've chosen as a threshold, it could be different. Uh, then if, if, it's, if it's less than that threshold and it's usually 0 .00, 0 0.05, then we can reject the null hypothesis that the average is whatever it is that we assumed it to be and we can accept the fact that the, that the, that the, that the, the sample mean that we've gotten is statistically significant. Okay, so that's the easiest example. If you understand that one, you'll understand the rest of these super duper easy. Let's keep going. In these two examples, and I've got two here just to illustrate the fact that there's two possible ways of asking this next kind of question. We've got we've got life expectancy in Africa and, and in Europe in the top right hand corner, and we've got life expectancy in Ireland and in Switzerland at the bottom bottom left over here. Now, the reason I've got two here is just to, to highlight the fact that there's two ways of doing this. We could ask the question, is there a difference without specifying in which direction. So is there a difference, for example, between the life expectancy in Ireland and the life expectancy in Switzerland? And we, we might say, look, we don't know in which direction the difference might be. We're just asking, are, these, are they the same or are they different? Is the difference that we're seeing here statistically significant? Would we expect to see a difference of this magnitude or more if it were the case that in, you know, in the scenario of the null hypothesis, that in fact Ireland and Switzerland have the exact same uh, life expectancy. And if, and if that probability is less than 0 0.05, if that's our threshold, then we would say that it is statistically significant. We reject the null hypothesis. We, we reject the notion that they've got the same life expectancy. And we accept the fact that a life expectancy, that, that, that this is statistically significant. We could 
approach the same the, the exact same problem in a slightly different way. And let's look let's use Africa and Europe for that. We could say, look, we want to ask the question, is it statistically significant that that Africa is that Af that Africa has a life expectancy less than Europe of this magnitude. So we might go into the question saying we know that Africa has got a life expectancy less than Europe. We're asking is a difference of this magnitude statistically significant? So we're not asking is there a difference in any direction. We're saying there is a we think there is a difference. We think that the difference we think that Africa has a, a, a different a, 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 we're asking is Africa is the life expectancy in Africa less than Europe? by this magnitude or more, and is that statistically significant? And under those circumstances, you do a one-tailed t-test. Does that make sense? Two-tailed, if you're saying, is there a difference in any direction? One-tailed, if you're saying, is there a difference in a particular direction? Okay, you got it? And in both cases, the null hypothesis is that both populations have got the same mean, that, the, that there's no difference between the life expectancy in the two populations. Now, Here's the last example, and this is this is what I want you to understand. This is a paired t-test. So we've got a one a one-tailed and a two-tailed over there. A paired t-test, and this illustrates it quite nicely. We've got a life expectancy in Africa in 1957, and then the life expectancy in Africa in 2007. So it's for each sample, for each observation in the 1957, there is a counterpart in 2007. Right, so one in Africa in, in 1957, one of the examples would be South Africa. There'd be a life expectancy. That's one of the observations. But in 2007, there would also be an observation that was South Africa, right? And there'd be an, a, a life expectancy there. It's Malawi in both cases, uh, Zimbabwe in both in both in both samples. In other words, there are these pairs. There is a counterpart in each population, and under those circumstances, you do a paired T test, and all of the principles. The exact same principles apply, right? You can you can be one-sided, two-sided, um, and and of course the p-value of less than a threshold that you just determine upfront. Anything less than that threshold, if it's if it's if it's five five percent, means that the null hypothesis gets rejected. The null hypothesis is that both of these have got the exact same life expectancy, the exact same mean. And if that's not the case, if we reject that, we can accept that the difference that we're seeing is st statistically significant. All right, got it, let's keep going. Next, we're gonna talk about ANOVA. So here we've got the we've got two means, right? If we wanna add a third, what do we do? We can't do, we can't, we can't do three means with a t-test, we would do an analysis of variance, ANOVA, all right? So let's look at that next. Analysis of variance, we're trying to basically answer the same kind of question that we were with the t-test, but except now we've got three populations and we wanted to compare three or more populations and we wanted to compare the means right the null hypothesis is still the same that the null hypothesis is that there are no differences in the means of these populations and the alternative hypothesis is that in fact there is a difference that the difference we're seeing is statistically significant right in this case uh, I've, I've used box plots and density uh, density plots to, to illustrate the difference uh, in means in three populations. We've got Europe, the Americas, and Asia. This is taken from the gapminder data. This is real data, so uh, it's super duper interesting. And we're seeing here that the data is showing a difference in the means across these dif different population groups, right? The question is, is that difference real? And if we do a, an ANOVA test, it will show a p-value that's very small. But once you've done that, right, you've done the ANOVA test, you've shown that there's a small p-value, we can reject the null hypothesis, which is that there's no difference in the means. We can accept the fact that there is some sort of statistical difference. Uh, how then do we tease out where that, what's driving that difference, right? Because all that, conclusion, all we can conclude from that is that one of these populations is different from the others. And sometimes there's, you know, you may have more than three here and you can do, there are ways of determining uh, where, where that, what's driving that difference. And what I've done here is I've, I've fed our model into what's called a two key multiple comparison of means. And it's taken each of the options, you know, Asia and America, Europe and America and Europe and Asia, and looked at them individually, right? And if you look at the results of it, it's quite interesting because you can sort of see, well, between Asia and America, there is a difference of minus two or the difference of two, it doesn't really matter. The magnitude doesn't matter. But the confidence interval for that difference is between minus six 
and 0.72. Now, and here you can see it diagrammatically. That confidence interval crosses the zero threshold. In other words, the confidence interval, the 95% confidence interval, includes the possibility of a zero, which a zero means there's zero difference. In other words, it includes the possibility that there's no difference between those two population means. However, Europe and America, right, we've got a difference of four. The confidence interval does not include zero. It's from 0 0.3 to 7.2. And, uh, and, and Europe to Asia, again, same story, quite a big difference. And the difference does not include the possibility of zero, of no difference. And as you would expect, the p-values, the adjusted p-values, uh, bears that out. So in the Asia to America, where the confidence interval included zero, the p-value does not cross the threshold of 5% of, uh, or less. It's 0.14. But the other two, where the confidence interval does not include zero, does not include the possibility of no difference, they both have small p-values less than 0 .0, uh, 0, 0 0.05. Okay, got it? Now let's talk about the chi-squared test. There's two of them, right? There's the goodness of fit test, fit test and there's the chi-squared test of independence. Now, really what we're looking at here is categorical variables and proportions of categorical variables. And this is a great test to kind of test the notion, right? We're testing whether or not there in fact is a difference in the proportions across the different categories. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Right, so here we've got uh, some flowers. These happen to be irises, and we know that they come in, we've categorized them as small, medium, and large. And in the first instance, we could ask the question, are the proportion of flowers that are small, medium, and large the same? Do we expect to see the same number of small, medium, and large flowers in a random sample that we take from a population? And we answer that question by doing a chi-squared goodness of fit test. Let's have a look at that. And again, we're talking about hypothesis testing. In other words, if, if it were the case that there wasn't a difference in proportions, that would be our null hypothesis, right? Our null hypothesis is that there's no difference in proportion in the proportion of small, medium, and large uh, flowers, right? If that were true, and we took a random sample, and that random sample happened to show a difference in proportions as large as or bigger than the difference we're seeing now, we would consider if if that if if that eventuality was considered to be extremely unlikely, then we could reject the idea that they're all the same proportions, and we could accept the fact that what we're seeing in the data is in fact statistically significant. What do we mean by extremely unlikely? Well, we've got a cutoff point called the alpha value. That's the probability. You know, how small does how small must that probability be for us to consider it to be? not like, like unacceptably small to the point that we wouldn't really believe that. We wouldn't accept the, the null hypothesis to be true. Right, and, and usually we use 0.5 as we've talked about so many times in these videos. So we do a chi-square test. We take this data, we make a table, put it into the chi-square test and we get a p-value. That p-value is that probability. If that p-value is less than the threshold we talked about, usually 0 0.05, but it could be anything depending on what it is that you're trying to measure and how important your sort of discrimination is. If that p-value is less than the threshold, then we reject the null, we accept the alternative, and we say that this difference that we're seeing in the data is in fact statistically significant. And the exact same principle applies to the chi-squared test of independence. We're asking the question, are the proportions of our species are they in any way dependent or are they independent of the size of the flowers? Is knowing the value, knowing the, is, does knowing the size of the flower tell us anything about the probability of a particular flower being in one of these species, right? Looking at these graphs, it seems that that is the case, but we need to demonstrate that statistically. So we do a chi-squared a chi test of independence and we get a p-value. If the p-value is very, very small beyond a predetermined threshold, remember it has to be predetermined, you can't do it retrospect retrospectively, that's p-hacking, bad science. Uh, if, it's, if, if the p-value is very small, in other words, the probability of a sample showing a, a, a difference in proportions or a, a relationship, which is demonstrated by a difference in proportions of this magnitude or more, the probability of that being the case in the event that the null hypothesis was, was true, in other words, that there was no difference, if that prob probability is extremely small, we reject the notion that these things are all the same, that the, that the proportions are the same, and accept the fact that in fact, what we're seeing in the data, this difference that we're seeing, this relationship that we're seeing, is in fact statistically significant, right? That's the chi-squared test of independence. Now, stay and watch another video. Share this video with people that you think might find it useful. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't hit the bell notification if you want notification of future videos.
Take care. Don't do drugs, always do your best. Don't ever change. Speak to you again soon. All the best. Bye.